What's up, people? Jade up here with another edition of the Weekly Top 5. But before I get started with this video, I wanted to remind you guys to subscribe to the PWF Empire channel here on YouTube. Within the next few weeks, I will be moving all of my original videos over to that channel, including the WTF series, which you are watching right now. But before we get there, let's deal with this video, and let's get on to story number one. Shawn Michaels was announced to be the special guest referee for Triple H and The Undertaker's Hell in a Cell match at WrestleMania 28. I always knew that this was a possibility. I actually thought that they were going to do it last year at WrestleMania 27, but seeing as they went with Triple H and The Undertaker once again at WrestleMania, it was a smart choice to save that for this year. This feud has already been great, and HBK added to the mix. That does nothing but create all kinds of potentially awesome moments for WrestleMania. They planted the seeds for the rift between Triple H and Michaels a month ago, then they brought it back up on Raw this week with the announcement that he was going to be the special guest referee for the match, and that just shows how well thought out this thing is, because without that, we would have been basically placed in a situation where Shawn Michaels has on one side, the guy who forced him into retirement, defeated him, forced him to retire, and then on the other side, his best friend. Not much of a choice there, is it? But there's some doubt now as to what can happen, and that doubt it equals excitement for me because there are so many possibilities, so many great possibilities as to what can happen in this match, and it could seriously go either way. I mean, you also have the question there as to whether Shawn Michaels would even be a factor in the result of the match because he could call it straight down the middle in favor of either guy, like whichever one gets that that final that final finisher at the end of the match and then they make that cover Shawn Michaels makes the straight one two three and that's oh it's it like it's over no must no fuss whatsoever but then on the flip side he could end up screwing somebody and that person could be Triple H because like I said they planted the seeds of doubt there with their friendship with uh Shawn Michaels failing to end the streak with The Undertaker two times in a row at WrestleMania, and he could be thinking in his head, okay, this dude feels some kind of way about people thinking that I'm better than him, so he's trying to do what I couldn't do, what I tried to do, what I failed to do, so do you really think I'm going to raise this motherfucker's hand in victory when I have the power in my hands to make this match go either way? So, I mean, that's there. Then on the other side, he could also screw The Undertaker out of the streak and give him his first loss at WrestleMania and that would be absolutely huge but then again you know it's not as if Triple H and Shawn Michaels don't have a history of doing things like that in WWE we can go back to the Montreal screw job and I'd be surprised if WWE didn't play up the history the controversial history between Triple H and Shawn Michaels going into the show maybe even have the Undertaker call him out like you motherfuckers like, you're just putting on a show for everybody out here, acting as if you have a problem with each other, when really, you're plotting behind my back to screw me out of the streak. So, I think that that could definitely be a way that they go leading up into this match for WrestleMania. This feud continues to surprise me, but then I look at the names of the people involved, Triple H, Shawn Michaels, The Undertaker, and I realize that I shouldn't have been surprised in the first place at how good it is. I can't wait to see how everything turns out at WrestleMania. So on Raw, Santino wins the United States Championship in an impromptu match. I mean, no buildup whatso friggin' ever. These reactions that Santino has been getting from the crowd, absolutely insane. Let me put emphasis on that word, insane. They're fucking crazy because I don't have any idea whatsoever where they come from. But wherever they come from, this is basically just WWE responding to the crowd being so pro-Santino and rushing the title on him. And... I don't have any problem with it at all. Actually, I kind of like it. I know in a perfect world, we would all like to see a nice mid-card feud built around the title, but let's not act like WWE gives a damn about the United States Championship anyway. Just look at the person that Santino won the title from, Jack Swagger. Look at how he won the title. Look at how he disappeared from Raw for weeks after that. Look at his last pay-per-view title defense. That was an impromptu match too. Well, it wasn't, it kind of wasn't an impromptu match, seeing as it did get started backstage based off of a fucking fart joke, but that basically tells you all that you need to be told about what WWE really thinks about the United States Championship, but with Santino, this is a different case, because with all of this sudden interest in him, they do have the chance to push the reset button on the title and make it more of a priority than it was before, so... I'm definitely willing to give Santino as a champion a shot because, like I said, they do have the chance to make the United States Championship a priority, and Santino, he's pretty entertaining, so I'm definitely on board. 
Randy Orton recently made his return in SmackDown. I, for one, am glad that he's back because he brings a sense of seriousness, intensity, and star power that SmackDown desperately needs on the road to WrestleMania. But he comes back, and who do they have him feud with into WrestleMania? Of all people, Kane. Are you fucking serious? Really? Kane? Kane, the same dude that just came out of a feud with John Cena that went absolutely nowhere whatsoever ever. This is a guy that you want to feud with Randy Orton into WrestleMania. And as good as Orton is, even he isn't enough to save SmackDown from the train wreck that it is right now. I'm a big fan of the blue brand and they usually put on solid shows each and every week but for Wrestlemania you need to be a whole hell of a lot more than just solid. I like what they're doing with Cody Rhodes and Big Show right now but how in the hell is it that that feud has more punch behind it than the feud for the world friggin championship. I like both Brian and Sheamus, but there's just such a huge disconnect here. Brian wants to keep the world title, Sheamus wants to get it, and you can't accomplish both of those at the same fucking time, so something has gotta give, but I'm not feeling that sense of urgency there. It's like, oh hey, let me mention so-and-so's name so people remember I'm supposed to be feuding with him. And every time that they mention the other, or they are, are they're in the ring with each other, it just feels so inconsequential, like this feud is doing the absolute bare minimum right now. They're not given nearly enough time or the platform to build up the heat just between the two of them. And it's pretty clear that WWE does not give a rat's ass about this feud with everything else that's going on for WrestleMania 28. And I'm being generous by even calling it a feud. And that really is a shame because they're basically being handicapped from succeeding because they've been thrown on the back burner. And the same thing can kind of be said about the other world title match, Chris Jericho versus CM Punk for the WWE Championship at WrestleMania 28. Same thing can kind of be said about that feud, them being thrown on the back burner, but to a lesser extent. But that does lead us into story number four. On the latest episode of Pro Wrestling Talk Radio, we debated a ton of topics like the pros and cons of HBK being added as a special guest referee to the Hell in a Cell match at WrestleMania 28, whether that match needs blood or not, the bad news for WWE with the number of injuries going up and the ratings going down. We also talked about the state of the world title feuds on the road to WrestleMania and debated if they were being thrown in a back burner and was it because WWE didn't want them to overshadow the big matches at Mania, Cena versus The Rock, Undertaker versus Triple H, or they didn't want to put in any extra effort because WrestleMania has sold itself already. In addition to all of that, we talked about a lot more on the latest episode of PWTR, so make sure you guys check that out down in the description box. You can click a link, go check out that full episode, and if you want to tune into the show live, we go live Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Time on PWFEmpire.com. I have such a great time doing the show, love doing the show. Shout out to my co-hosts, and yeah, we do a great job of um, stirring the pot and causing controversy pretty frequently, and... It looks as if the latest episode of PWTR was no exception. I had no idea until I uploaded that clip of PWTR to YouTube that people had an issue with John Cena not taking his feud with The Rock seriously. Had a lot of people complaining about him smiling at The Rock during the last segment on Raw. And I guess I kind of like rubbed salt in the wounds when I made that the damn picture that I attached to the audio for PWTR. My bad, but you know, I digress. Um... I don't really see how that can be an issue for anybody, seeing as The Rock has spent a whole damn year, a whole year, making jokes at John Cena's expense. Lady Parts, Fruity Pebble, Guess That Yum Rocket. And he's even taken it to the next level these last couple of weeks since he's returned to WWE, calling John Cena a Kung Pao bitch, saying that his cologne smelled like possum piss, saying that he wanted to stick a feather up his ass. Then what did he call him a... Uh, a transvestite Wonder Woman. None of that shit was serious either, but I guess it's okay just because it was The Rock who said it, right? It's okay because he said it, but anytime John Cena says it, oh, we have a big fucking problem there. And I'm not criticizing The Rock because those history lessons from Raw, fucking hilarious and awesome. I love them, but I'm just pointing out the double standard here. I think the real problem here is that John Cena isn't pulling any punches anymore and people don't know how to handle it. It's like every criticism that The Rock has had of John Cena, he's taken them and threw that shit into the Boston Harbor. The Rock calls John Cena a Fruity Pebble, so what does he do? Gets into contact with the people who make Fruity Pebbles, puts his face on the fucking cereal box, 
gets a sponsorship and makes money off of it. Straight up badass move. No other way around it at all. Badass move. Pretty smart too. Then we go on to The Rock talking about how whack John Cena is. And what does John Cena do? He starts to make fun of himself. Therefore making The Rock's attacks less effective. And it's been working. Cena has done a great job deflecting The Rock's attacks and getting more aggressive with his own. He's stepped up to the plate and has been knocking it out of the park. The Rock was out there for 20 damn minutes last week and Cena came out in two, and to quote Bunk Moreland, beat on his ass like it was a rented mule. But of course, people are saying that that doesn't count because it was scripted. So, going off of that logic, wouldn't it mean a 90... logic... Wouldn't that mean that 99% of all of the other shit that has ever happened in the entire history of professional wrestling doesn't count either because it was scripted too? Yeah, that makes sense. Anyway, whatever. I digress, but I do kind of see the point that people are attempting to make in saying that the only way that John Cena can look good is if The Rock tones himself down. Well, what about this week? What about What about this week's show? The Rock was at the very top of his game, and even then... John Cena still came out of the week looking strong. To go back to the original topic of discussion, Cena smiling in The Rock's face was nothing more than classic defiance. He basically told the world without saying a word at all, all of the shit that he's talking about right now <laughs> is BS. It's not phasing me at all. But people want John Cena to be affected by The Rock. They want John Cena to be threatened by The Rock, and they're pissed off that he's not. Wait. John Cena isn't crumbling in the mere presence of The Rock's greatness, but, but but The Rock is from the Attitude Era. John Cena, how dare you? You have segments of the fan population that have all of this built-up hatred for John Cena, and they feel The Rock represents them because he's from the Great Attitude Era, and he's the one who will finally give John Cena what's been coming to him. So they really, really thought that this feud was just going to be The Rock verbally beating the hell out of John Cena, and then whooping his ass at WrestleMania, and then do what leave out of all of the stupid shit that wwe has done and probably will continue to do i guarantee t that won't be added to the list because the shit won't happen uh -uh. i think a lot of people have underestimated john cena me admittedly being one of them and the mere fact that he can even keep up with the rock the person in my mind without a shadow of a doubt the most charismatic personality ever most charismatic of all time the fact that john cena is not overshadowed by that and sometimes he can even outright win their exchanges that's pretty impressive now that we've entered the home stretch and cena actually has the rock looking vulnerable that's improved the quality of the feud for me i always thought john cena was a little too passive and the feud was too one-sided in favor of the rock but now that things have evened up you know it's like mcdonald's i'm loving it well, that's it for this edition of the Weekly Top 5. Share your feedback on the show down in the comment section below. And remember to subscribe to the PWF Empire YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Peace out.